Welcome to the Sharkpreneur Podcast with Kevin Harrington and Seth Green. Kevin Harrington is the inventor of the infomercial, one of the original sharks from the hit TV show Shark Tank, and has generated over $5 billion in TV and digital direct response sales. Seth Green is the world's first trusted authority on cutting edge direct response marketing, a best-selling author, and the only three-time Marketer of the Year nominee. On the podcast, Kevin and Seth interview sharkpreneurs who share straight talk on what it takes to explode your business. Why do so many businesses struggle while others seem to explode overnight? Do you wish you had the secret to this type of exponential growth? Now, I've scaled more than 20 businesses to over $100 million, and it's not just luck. In my new book with Mark Tim, Mentor to Millions, you'll learn the repeatable framework I use in all my business ventures for massive success. Order at KevinMentor.com and get over $1,000 in bonuses. Head to KevinMentor.com. Welcome to the podcast. This is your host, Seth Green. Today, I've got the good fortune to be interviewing Eric Berman, the Papa Shark of Branditize that amplifies business to consumer brands through digital marketing. Eric, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me today. Let's go back in time a little bit. How'd you get started? Uh, well, you know, my career um, actually was uh, right after uh, UC San Diego. I, I was, I, I didn't really realize you're an entrepreneur until you just start getting into business. And um I noticed something and looking back, a lot of my friends went off to the corporate world and I, that's, I just didn't feel the need to do that. So what was more exciting is a couple of buddies starting this idea and they said, hey, we have this idea to kind of revolutionize the college market and do some things. I said, cool, where's my desk? And they said, well, it doesn't pay anything. I said, that's all right. I am just want the experience. So I went in there and that led to about 18 months of no salary and just building stuff. <laughs> and, uh, you know, parents thought I was crazy. And then, uh, then you fast forward, and three of us led to twelve of us led to four hundred people, uh, led to raising almost hundred million dollars, and we were in, actually, in hindsight, the first Facebook of all Facebooks for social media company that we had built. And um, you know, it's just really, I like to say, I had my my street smart MBA, just go out there and figure shit out. Um, pardon my language. You know, when you're in there, you're just hustling and grinding, and and you know, kind of starting every department, replacing myself with people better than me, and and just learning on the fly. Um, you know, thought I was going to be retired at, at 28 years, er, 28, and then the uh, big stock market crash of 2000. I was unfortunately uh, got hit in that well where, where we were about to go public, but then uh, all of a sudden lost everything. And so, um, we went from the number one site in the college space and the number 40th biggest site in the entire internet to, to sort of losing it all. Um, and uh, it was quite a roller coaster ride. And that was, I'd say, the first phase of my entrepreneurial journey. Wow. Well, that's quite a phase. And the longer version of that story should probably be in a book somewhere. Am I allowed to ask what the site was? Yeah, it was called uh, collegeclub.com. Great URL. Um, so then how did that lead into the the starting in, of Branditize? Yeah, well, um, you know, while we were running that business, and by the way, on a side note, my brother ended up starting MySpace, so that I get that for, for I guess, Berman family uh, uh, fun there. Um, so that, that'll that be another story for another time. But um, yeah, so I, 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 um, interesting enough, one of the things that I always look back on, um, when we were first starting that business, you know, I was 21, and I realized in school and colleges and things of that nature, one of the things they don't teach, I wish they did, is really life skills. How to be, how to understand that, you know, just general communication, time management, goal setting, things of that nature. And I really started te- getting, learning that stuff through the, the, the likes of Tony Robbins, Brian Tracy, um, the famous initial gurus, if you will, at the time. Um, so much that, uh, you know, my mentor are, are, are that sort of started the company, uh, we used to lock ourselves in the room at 6 a.m. and 6 to 7 every morning was breakfast with Brian Tracy and Tony Robbins. And that really helps set the mind for what the entrepreneurial journey really about just being a professional. There's so many cool skills that you just don't learn in college. And the reason why I share that story is when I left College Club, um, I got the honor to meet Brian Tracy, who I was, he was sort of a hero of mine because I listened to all his stuff. And um, he was in San Diego where I live and he needed help with this internet thing <laughs> back in 2001. I need a website. Um, so I went to Brian and, and I got introduced to him. I said, Brian, I'm a huge fan. I know exactly what you need. But, you know, I'll, I'll do this for you, but don't pay me anything until I make you money and, and I'm not going to be an employee. I'll come in as a partner. And again, it was always that, that you know, even in my first sort of business, one of the things I like to share is that 
you know, when you're confident in what you could do and you're able to make it happen, sometimes just going out there and offering to do stuff to get your foot in the door and the opportunities you want has been just su such a, you know, so successful uh, or just give me such great opportunities I never would have had. And so when you make that offer, you can't really refuse that. And so I go to O'Brien and say, I'll, I'll, I'll build your stuff out. Uh, and, uh, but pay me when we make profits together, you know, great. You know, said, great, Eric, you're my kind of guy. Let's get rolling. Um, and so, so that really was the first foray. And I, I guess when you build an agency, a lot of times people joke that you don't really, you know, grow up in life thinking you want to be an agency owner, you sort of back into it. And that, that was the initial sort of how I backed into that, um, where I started with Brian, uh, built the team, worked with him for about, got about 13, 14 years while I was doing some other consulting, helping people with the internet. I had a fun foray with Club Med, building out a social media platform for Club Med called My Club Med. Um, and that, that was a great time. And then, um, but ultimately, as I started building Brian's online business, other people sort of, you know, tapped on my shoulder and said, hey, what you're doing for Brian, can you do for me? And when you get that question asked enough, you're like, hmm, maybe instead of me jumping all over the place, I should stay in this lane and focus on this. And that kind of led to really where we are today. Wow. So that's an incredible story and a whole lot of ups and downs along the way, I am sure. Um, who was the first client after Brian Tracy? Um, it's uh, well, one of our, our best clients uh, now. It's a guy named Phil Town, who yep. his business brand. Yeah, you know, Phil, he's a uh, rule one rule investing. One, absolutely. Yeah. And that's been an amazing, amazing journey with Phil. And another big name was Jack Canfield from Chicken Soup for the Soul. Um, and uh, we, we've had a couple other sort of misses along the way as we picked up those great clients. Um, don't even remember some of them, but that's, that's again, part of the journey is sort of, you just get out there and start swimming and, and, you know, reflecting on why certain clients didn't work out and why certain clients did work out and really kind of continue to pivot to go down that positive direction. That makes a lot of sense. Who is an ideal client for you now? Um, we like to say uh, really focused on the on the B2C and somebody who's got a proven business or product that needs to be amplified. You know, they're kind of sitting around and they've built something and they either have a very small marketing team or or often you see the founders that are doing too much marketing. They shouldn't be, as we all know, you got to be working on the business, not in the business as entrepreneurs. And so we like to come in and say, hey, let us come in and we'll work in the business and we'll be your sort of outsourced CMO and team. And we're going to act like your CMOs and and and. One of the cool things that I've been able to, to weave within our business is that is really where I started my journey. And that's the opportunity for some of our top clients to truly partner with us, where unlike a traditional agency that you pay sort of this monthly retainer, um, we do start that way. Eventually, we like to say we date, then we get married. So our clients, so like, like Phil Town and Brian and, and others, um, we get to the point where they stop paying us. So we just take a percentage of what we grow together. And that, that, that really you know, makes for a true partnership when you're out there. And again, it's a creative way to, to run business. And, and you think from a client's perspective, instead of wondering why you are writing a check every month and having to justify why you're spending a check for 20, 30, 40 grand a month, you know, it's, it's quite different when you're just looking at your profits and saying, okay, I'm just going to take a percentage of my profits and this is my team. And it's a cool way of looking at, re, re looking at, you know, we're doing the same work. It's just a different way of looking at it. Absolutely. Talk a little bit about the team you've got, you've built and have behind you now. Um, it's been quite a journey, uh, as you alluded to, uh, my, my name, we all have shark nicknames. I, I, I'm, you know, mine being Papa Shark. And that's just a fun thing that we kind of, we kind of did. Everybody gets anointed their name about a month in, but, uh, for me, you know, my first company college club, I learned a lot from us, uh, others around me about the importance of culture and, and really focusing on the people more than, more than anything. It starts with them. And, uh, throughout that, there's just a lot of things we do, you know, for the people at branded size, obviously you talk a lot about, about hiring the millennials and the differences and, and working that. And it, and it is true. You really got to listen, um, understand that people want to, uh, really feel empowered. They want to feel trusted. Um, they want opportunities to learn and grow. Um, they want obviously space to do that. Um, they want to be heard, you know, setting up little systems for people to, to allow them to voice their opinions and truly listen to what they have to say um versus just okay here's the marching orders go do the work um you know offer that flexibility and then obviously being able to sprinkle in a little bit of a fun, fun along the way and uh we've really tried hard doing that and and to me i know it you know i'm rewarded by that because when we do get candidates either staying and through interviews you just hear so much of it you know what why did you come work for us or want to be with us and a lot of you know the culture word does come out quite a bit absolutely your passion is obvious what do you like best about what you're doing um, I love to just uh, uh, make a difference and make a positive impact by taking an idea, solving a problem and watching it grow. And then ultimately, when you see the satisfaction of the end, end consumer, um, 
there's nothing better than that. And really everybody wins along the way. You know, your end consumer wins, the, the, the client wins because they developed it. You know, we win and our staff wins because um, they feel sort of, uh, you know, they, they feel ownership into have done that. And, and, and that's just, it's just a great feeling. And I love, I love, you know, as an entrepreneur, you're always looking for, um, you know, you don't, I, I, in, in hindsight, you know, you know, I have my list of ideas. There's always stuff you want to do and they're all come from what problem are you solving out there? And, and when you do get to solve that problem, it's, it's a neat feeling. You are juggling a lot. How do you manage the team? How do you make sure the right things get done at the right time by the right people? Um, well, great question. I think first is 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 um, creating systems, SOPs, uh, 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 building out an infrastructure. We like you almost like to say you got to get the house in order, um, and and put that in place. And right butts, right seats. Um, you know, really being able to understand the role and responsibility, and and putting the person who's passionate about that. You know, oftentimes you find people working at stuff they really don't like that, and you're putting them in there, and it's ultimately not going to work. So, so, so doing that, and I think also, you know, matching, you know, I have a couple partners and we all have different strengths and weaknesses. And I think that's also so important. I find oftentimes I'll see friends that are running companies and they have a couple of people and I'm like, well, you're just like your partner. That's, you know, who's, you know, you guys are both out there running around being wild mavericks. Who's the person that's actually being more operational and organized. You need to have a little bit of both. Um, and so that, that's what really, really helps, you know, personally, I'm relentless about just putting together uh, to-do lists, uh, sticking to them. Um, I'm a rare sort of uh, very responsive email in, in, inbox zero kind of guy. Um, and I feel like I just want to be there for the team, always staying on top of it, you know, working earlier, working later to make sure that everybody's being taken care of. And then I, I feel less stressed knowing that things are, are being handled. How do you manage the client roller coaster of the ups and downs? Uh, uh, great question. It, it, it's a tough one. And honestly, that's one of the most difficult parts about, about running the agency and the, and the job is, is, is the ups and downs. Um, even so much recently, we, we've talked a lot internally about, about managing expectations. And we, we kind of joke around and say client short-term memory syndrome, <laughs> meaning clients come in, you know, say they want one thing, we go act on that. And then we deliver that. And they're like, well, why did you give me this? This is what I want. And, and we're like, well, what do you mean? And so, and, and, you know, we have the recording on Zoom of you saying these things. And do you really want to get in a pissing, you know, contest? What you said, she said, that's not going to ultimately win. So, you know, I think part of it is, you know, is asking the question constantly. And I've got my team trained to constantly go back there and say, okay, well, let's reset the goals. Not like the three-month goals, like all the time. Like, okay, this month, here's what we're trying to deliver. Is this what we're looking at? You know, if you're to wave a magic wand, Mr. or Mrs. Client, you know, what's a good result look like in 30 days, 60 to 90 days? And then ask that question over and over again. Um, and that's been kind of something we, we and, and I just, just doing that alone has helped with client satisfaction and the ups and downs of dealing with clients, because as long as we're hitting the market, understand. And I think that's one of the biggest keys is we think we understand, but we don't unless we ask and ask often. That is a great philosophy. With all the success you've achieved, what's your biggest challenge now? Um, biggest challenge right now is, uh, and I talked to my team about this a little bit is, you know, it goes back to my entrepreneurial itis, um, you know, running an agency is, is fun and it's cool. And there's a lot of rewards from it. Uh, ultimately you're, you're building stuff for other people. And what I'm missing, uh, um, is taking building stuff that, you know, either we buy an existing company that we own more of or an existing widget idea, or there's a lot of ideas we have ourselves. Now, certainly starting something from scratch is a lot more difficult than, than let's say acquiring somebody who wants to get out of their business and needs some marketing love that we could just come in and, and, and catapult. So, you know, there's lots of options about doing that, but in both cases, you know, we ultimately own the brand that we're escalating and scaling and building. And so, you know, I think my biggest challenge is, is figuring out a way to have the, the, the branditized marketing machine as it is work enough that I can start to step away more and more um, and some key people and start to, without losing focus on that, and that's the key, um, being able to really incubate or, or, or build sort of some of my own assets outside the agency that could work with the agency hand in hand. I think that'll give me a different level of satisfaction as I continue down my journey. What is, how have you guys dealt with all of the changes like from iOS and Facebook, for example? Um, a lot of internal communication with our clients, with ourselves. It's definitely, you know, watching the data, you know, it, it, it's tough. Now, now, fortunately for us, um, because we were sort of birthed on the, the likes of the Brian Tracy's and the Phil Towns of the world, we weren't sort of stuck on just running F Facebook ads to generate traffic. And I think a lot of people that are just like, 
hey, put up uh, 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 some some ads, and that's your only way to, to generate traffic. And you didn't do all the content marketing and the and the all the other you know the SEO and all the other levers you could pull to drive traffic. They were hurt a little bit more than than we were hurt in many cases. So it, it's certainly been ups and downs, but not catastrophic. What is next for you? Um, I think the next is as I as I talked to, I think as, you know going into twenty you know next year. Um, you know, we'd literally like to start incubating some things that we own, we have more assets on, we own own more of. And I think that'll be uh, really exciting is when, you know, ultimately you talk about, you know, there's agencies out there. A lot of people build agencies to scale and get sold and acquired or roll up. For us, we're more passionate about continuing to build the agency and using, leveraging the agency to incubate our own thing, ideas, and then almost having sort of two parts, you know, like branditized, you know, ventures and, you know, branditized marketing kind of thing. Awesome. What do you do when you're not at the office? What do you do for fun? Um, I, I travel a ton and for forever I was traveling a lot with my buddies. I'm sort of the, the, the guy that would organize all the trips with everybody and we do crazy long trips. I also um, have a, uh, into horse racing, um, have a syndicate with some friends and we have some big race horses. In fact, we were in the Super Bowl of racing last weekend, the Breeders' Cup. We had a couple of horses and that's really fun. But most importantly, I uh, finally settled down at my ripe young age of 49 and uh and uh and uh, found a woman of my dreams a couple of years ago got married and had our first baby at that 49 so um i'm enjoying the family life right now and it's been it's been such a cool experience congratulations well thank you for our folks watching and listening who want to learn more about you and all things branditize where is the best place for us to send them uh branditize.com that's brand e t i z e.com Awesome. All right. This has been Seth Green with Eric Berman from Branditize. Eric, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Take care. Thanks everybody for watching or listening. We'll talk to you or see you next time. Do you need money to fund your idea, product, or service? Are you ready to take your business to the next level, but need capital to get it done? Kevin Harrington has heard more than 50,000 pitches and knows how to help you make the perfect pitch to get the funding for your entrepreneurial dream. He's distilled the process down in his perfect pitch cheat sheet, and it's yours for free. Just text PITCH to him right now at 727-888-2100. Text PITCH to 727-888-2100 right now and claim your free perfect pitch cheat sheet. Text PITCH to 727-888-2100 to start funding your dream today. This show has been produced by Market Domination, LLC. To discover how you can have your own show completely done for you and turn it into a real published book and become the authority in your marketplace, go to www.marketdominationllc.com slash podcast offer.